Hi guys, another quick one. As the title says, turning bottles into tea light holders. The wife was going to go out and buy some, so I thought, try and save myself some money. And cut a few of these wine bottles into tea light holders. So, I've quickly knocked up this jig. It really is quickly knocked up. It's If you're going to do lots of these, you want to make something more permanent. What I've done is got a couple of these bits of... I think a three by one and a half and I've clamped them to the bench but I've had to hang them over a little bit so I've clamped them here but to get the clamps on I've had to hang them over so I've put this uh, stand underneath basically because it's a steel bench if it was wood you could obviously just um, put a couple of screws in screw it to the bench um, and then I've put this Bit of angle iron on there as a stop for the base and a very cheap glass cutter clamped in a slight groove that I made with um, a rasp just to keep it in place and all you do is stick your bottle up against the stop make sure it's just touching the cutter and turn it around so let's have a close-up look you can see there you can probably see if to the right of the bottle it's slightly away that's so I can just push it into the cutter and make sure it's actually making good contact and you want to go slow and steady trying to keep an even pressure on it actually the wheel looks a bit loose I might try and tighten that up because obviously that's not going to be cutting as straight as it would and when you get to the end there stop don't go anymore just stop I've heard people say go round and round and round and round but don't because you're just going to make more lines it's going to fracture all over the place so just literally do the one complete revolution and then we get to the fun bit I use my Bosch over here it's full of cold water very cold water because it's freezing at the moment and I've had the bottles in here for a few minutes just to get the labels off um, you only need to soak them for I don't know, 10 minutes or so, the labels start peeling off quite easily. You see these, this, these bottles have only been in, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Top layers come off easy, the bottom layer would scrape off, but I'll leave it in there for a bit longer. That'll come off even easier. So I'll leave that there while I go and put the kettle on. And it's not for a cup of tea. All you do now, stick the bottle over your Bosch, pour on hot water. Simple as that. Try and keep it around the line and keep the bottle moving. Keep it round and round and round and round. I suppose five or six seconds worth of hot water, then straight in the cold. Keep it moving again in the cold. Bring it out and Bob's your uncle. That is very quick normally you have to do it a couple of times but you get the idea and it's good to have it over a, a big bowl of water because if you didn't it would uh, drop on the floor or drop into the bottom of the basin or whatever as that happened quite quickly I've got the labels off this white one I'm going to push it up against the stop and give it another go get double bubble today just keep it nice and steady, even pressure. When you get to the end, stop. I've never done a white one. We don't drink much white wine. So it'd be interesting to see how this one goes. So we'll go back over to the, the Bosch. I haven't reboiled the kettle. So this is the same water. Just over the top. Again, over the line for probably five or six seconds. Doesn't need a lot. Then into the water, into the cold water. Now I think this one's gone horribly wrong. I've just heard a nasty crack and you don't normally get that. And yeah, it's gone wrong. You can see as I turn it there, it's split in the wrong place. So that one's not worked and you don't they don't always work 
you can see that's cracked right the way in a completely the wrong place. Whether it's something to do with it being white glass, I don't know, but wine bottle glass is real rubbish anyway, but I might be able to salvage this top one. But wine bottle glass is real rubbish. But anyway, as you can see, well, I hope you'll be able to see, this camera will focus. It's, although it's a, it's a fairly nice straight cut, as you can just about see there, it's still not particularly nice. You, you wouldn't want to be drinking out of that uh, or holding it particularly. So I'm going to use this bit of wet and dry to try and smooth it off. Bit of water. And obviously if you were going to do dozens and dozens and dozens of these, you'd get yourself a, a lapping machine or something similar. But this is actually the most time consuming part of the whole process. The marking and the cutting is literally seconds. This is 10 or 15 minutes or so. So it's the same with uh, as I did with the knife. You, you go up in your grades of paper. You start with your, uh, your coarse, go down to your fine. That's if you want one for drinking. This just for the tea light holder is, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to get the worst off. And I think after that couple of seconds, let's see if we can see, you just see the dull bits appearing. That's where it's been smoothed. And what you want to do once you've smoothed the bottom, is actually get another piece and go around the edges just to give a bit of a chamfer. Again, if you're going to use this one for drinking, you'd go around with the chamfer a lot more than you would for the tea light holder. And then do the inside as well. I dare say you could put some fine paper on a, a Dremel or an um, air tool of some sort. I'm just going to whiz it around on here. It's going to be quite boring, so I'll cut the middle bit out. I suppose I've been doing this now for seven, eight, nine minutes, maybe a bit more. Which sounds a long time, but not that much when you're doing it. And if we can focus on it, you'll see, I don't know if you can, yeah, just about there. There's almost no shiny bits left. It's all gone dull. So that, I would, I would actually drink out of that, although I'm not going to because it's for the hot tea light, but that would do me. And as you can see, it's it's a really nice straight cut, much better than that one with, they do with string or anything else. So the next job is to make the tea light holder bit inside, all that goes inside. For that, I'm going to use these sconces. And as you can see, I've salvaged the the white one. And if you look, it's much much thicker glass. So I don't know if that's part of the problem or whether it's just, as I say, bad luck or dodgy glass. Anyway, I'm going to use these sconces which I bought for a job many, many years ago. Didn't use them all. They've been sitting in a drawer for years so I thought I might as well use them. You could use anything though. Just a bit of tin cut and slightly domed. Whatever you like. And just galvanised fencing wire. Again, I bought a spool of this oh, many years ago. Surprising how long it lasts. Just going to find the centre. It's about 18 inches long, I suppose, maybe a little bit less, 16. Bend it at the centre. Round my finger. You could bend it round a bit of bar, but my finger's there. That's all you want. And then judge it on your glass. You could spend a lot of time measuring and all the rest of it, but I'm just going to do this roughly about there bend it out and what you're trying to do is sort of mimic the shape of the inside of the glass and that's for the shoulders on there and then you want to come back in again it's basically following the inside of the glass so that the glass doesn't slip down the the uh, well just doesn't slip down so it stays where it's put basically like that. You don't want to spend, well you can spend as much as long as you like really, but 
I don't want to spend too much time. Push it up through, and that's what you're going to hang it on. And you can see the shoulders there stop it from going too far. Simple as that. Now you're just going to bend the bottom bit for the sconce. Again, just take a rough idea. You could say you could measure it, but just doing it by eye. Get them both about the same. So basically you're looking for a mini wine bottle. Play about with it as much as you like, get it right. But that sort of shape is what you're looking for. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to weld the sconce in there. Just going to put a couple of tacks on it, hold it in place. Obviously if you haven't got access to welding, you could probably solder it. Or maybe even epoxy it. I don't know how uh, epoxy is with heat. But uh, I'm sure welding's not the only way. So I'll just put a couple of tacks on there. We'll focus again. Just a couple of tacks. Nothing fancy because this galvanised doesn't like welding much. And that's it. All you do now, shove it into your glass, with your tea light in, hang it up, and there you go. I think that would look quite nice if you had half a dozen of them hanging in a tree or outside your house, outside your front door. So all I've got to do now is make one for this one. And then we'll go home and try it. I'm actually thinking about it. There's other things you could do with uh, with these. Instead of hanging them, I think I might have give this a go. Cut a piece of wood instead of hanging it from underneath. Just a bit wider than the diameter of the jar. Whiz around it with a router to make it look fancy around the top. Sit your tea light on it and sit that on top of it. Stop it burning whatever you put it on, outside or inside, wherever you like. Endless possibilities, all down to your imagination, as usual. So let's get home and see what they look like with the tea light in. Right, so we've come home. Pour myself a glass of wine, and that was the remainder of the white bottle from last night. So let's see if we can light these tea lights. Let's see what they look like. White one on the left, green one on the right, and that's it. I think those hanging in a tree, we could even hang them around the house. Look quite nice. White ones look nice as well. I think they'd look nice at night outside when it's really dark. So there you go. Simple job. You've seen it all before. That's my take on it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.